At the beginning of this year, I challenged myself to make a commercial game in one month and release it on Steam, and in only six weeks I succeeded, releasing Theist Now, my top-down telekinetic shooter, on Steam. But now, I want to up the challenge, make a commercial game in only one week, and release it on Steam. So here's the plan. This is Star Prey, a small game I made in about eight hours for a game jam using Kenny's public domain space art kit. You control a spaceship that flies towards your mouse, can shoot, and can drift to dodge enemy attacks. You go through a series of levels, clearing enemy ships to progress to the next. It's a simple fun game and I think a perfect candidate for turning into a full game. So let's begin. Day 1. Right now, Star Prey is fairly mediocre, but I think with one simple change, I can take it from mediocre to good shit. And that change is... Bouncing. Star Prey was loosely inspired by a game I made years ago called Celeste, a top-down space dogfighting game where you duel another ship. The problem with it was that because the ships move so fast, the enemy ship was almost always off-screen and you had to rely on a little off-screen indicator to tell where it was, which was not ideal. To fix that problem, in Star Prey I made the camera fixed so that the enemies are always on-screen. But then to dodge attacks and shoot, you have to drift by deactivating your acceleration and coasting, which almost always results in you going off screen and then you have to rely on an off screen indicator to tell where you are. Same problem as before. Then when I was editing the video for that jam, I had this idea. What if you bounced off the edge of the screen? Then both you and the enemies are always on screen and it adds another layer of strategy because now you can aim which way you drift to get better bounce angles to help dodge and shoot at enemies. So I made these walls. If you hit them, your ship uses the reflection equation to change velocity to simulate a bounce and the walls go through these small cylinder meshes they have and scale them over time along this curve multiplied by the inverse of the distance to the player ship to get a nice bouncy effect. With this new mechanic implemented, I started polishing the rest of the existing game. I added in some new UI elements and fonts to make everything more readable and intuitive. One important thing was that the restart and continue buttons needed to be on the bottom left because that's where your ship spawns, so when you start or restart a level, I wanted to make sure your mouse cursor was above your ship so you didn't immediately find some asteroids or enemies. I also improved the boss fight from the jam version. It's a fighter ship that chases you around and shoots at you, and I made so now it shoots at you more often but in shorter bursts, making it funner to uh, trade shots with. I also made it have a random start location so you can't cheese it by firing at it a bunch when the level begins. Finally, I made a weak version of the boss fighter ship that behaves the same way but has different graphics and way less health and made a few levels using them, putting the total level count at 10. Day 2. I replaced all the sound effects in the game with public domain ones by Kenny since the sound effects from the jam version were only free for use in non-commercial games. Next, I created a new ship, a ram ship. It's basically the same as the small fighter ships, except it doesn't shoot, just tries to run into you. This enemy turned out to be the most fun to fight since you have to make full use of your mobility to defeat them, and you can also lead them into other enemy ships to kill them both, which made for some fun new levels. People playtesting the game mentioned it was frustrating fighting the turret ships since it was really easy to get shot down by them, so I made their guns much larger with clearer graphics to better indicate what direction they're facing, allowing you to make better decisions about which direction to go to safely dodge around them. Finally, I added in a simple main menu that handles saving and loading last played levels, a level select screen, a settings menu where you can control music and sound effects volume, and a credit screen. I also made 10 more levels to show off new tweaks and ships, bringing the level count to 20. And with these new levels, I started experimenting with moving map elements, which definitely increased the challenge, but was a lot of fun. Day 3, I'd been live streaming the entire development process and been getting a lot of good suggestions from chat. One of those was walls that reflect bullets. It was pretty simple to make these, I just used this asset from the Kenny pack and made so bullets colliding with it would use the reflection equation to redirect their velocity. I found these walls tend to lead to more puzzle focused gameplay instead of action, which kind of worked actually. It made for like interesting break levels where you kind of rest and think more than react, I guess. I also created a new ship, a police ship that has a flashing siren that chases you and trails bombs that will explode if you run into them. It's a bit more tanky than the other ships and definitely added a new dynamic to the levels. To close out the day, I made 10 more levels featuring the new bullet walls and police ships, bringing the level count to 30. Day 4, I didn't have a lot of spare time today, so I just threw together a bunch of levels with existing mechanics and made a new boss fight, a mothership that has vulnerable pod base. You have to shoot, but it has shields that will open and close and spawn enemies in waves that you have to 
survive and fight off. So all this brought the total level count to 40. Day 5, I made some tweaks to the main menu, adding in sound effects for the buttons, fixed some bugs, and improved existing levels, and finally made 10 more levels with existing mechanics, bringing the level count to 50, which was my goal for the game. This day was mostly a grind in terms of level design, I had no more ideas and was pretty much just throwing things around randomly to see if something interesting would happen. Day 6, I added in a text intro for the Mothership boss battle, improved some things like making the UI scale with the screen size, rearranged all the levels to have a better difficulty curve and be clustered in similar themes. For this I just played through the whole game and had a list of level names on a separate monitor where I would mark how difficult the level was and what mechanics and style of gameplay it featured, and then just rearranged them on the level list array. On the suggestion of chat I also added in an easy mode where everything dies in one hit except bosses, and a difficulty selection screen on the main menu. After this I started working on the title screen art for the game. I was heavily inspired by this picture of a Concord flying in front of a solar eclipse, and basically just remade that but with the in-game ship and some stylizations. Day 7, I closed out development of the game with a bunch of polish and final touches. I made the title screen art parallax based on mouse movement, which had been suggested by Chad a bunch, and added speedrun timers that show how long a playthrough is taking and your times for the current level you're on, and I also made the level select screen show level completion times. The last main item on the agenda was music. I searched around for Creative Commons music and found these synthwave pieces by DOS88 that sounded pretty good. There was a fee to download the tracks, but it was only $9 for all of them, so I didn't mind. Then I went through and selected the tracks I liked the most, put them in game, and coded up a music manager to handle playing the right tracks on the right levels. And with that, the game was done. Over the next few days, I took it easy, made a simple trailer that shows off the game's mechanics, went through Steam's horribly stupid bullshit unintuitive process for setting up a store page, went through Itch's easy intuitive process for setting up a store page, and published Star Prey, my third commercial game ever. Thanks for watching, if you'd like to buy Star Prey, you can get it on Itch or Steam for just $3, though Itch does take a smaller cut out of the sale, so please buy it there instead. Links in the description. Also thanks to everyone who playtested the game on my Patreon.